the latest kind of um, wave of games has seen Man United beat Leeds 4-2. Kind of a highly anticipated game, really, because they've not played at Ellen Road in a Premier League fixture with fans for such a long time. And the game was amazing, wasn't it, as a spectacle? Like, it was so hard to sort of, I guess, tactically prepare for, for either coach, because the rule book goes out the window in this kind of affair, doesn't it? It was such a, a tense, high-energy game and tackles flying in all over the place. There was loads of rain. It was terrible conditions it felt like a game from sort of 30 years ago didn't it really in some ways a real like 60s 70s sort of classic encounter between the two um but 4-2 united won in the in the end and i thought they were good value for their win i mean we had a bit of a scare with two goals being pegged back in quick succession but i thought the reaction to it was pretty good overall it's i mean it shouldn't have got it shouldn't have come to that really and it's mm. something we've been guilty of especially over the last uh, few games in particular uh, conceding goals after the first half, uh, and again, you know, it happens. And you know, we, we're we're putting up a lot more energy into a game than we should be uh, when we should be cruising, tuning it up, and finishing it off, scoring a third goal. And yeah, but I mean, all credit to them. Yeah, you you know, they've they've gone the right way about it and um had the mentality to come back and you know win the game for a second time and um but the, I, I want to give a lot of credit to Ranyuk because he made the right subs but Fred came on and mm. he was able to control and pass a ball better in those conditions than he is in uh, on a dry sunny day so but I've got to give Fred a lot of credit he came on and played really well and Kind of gave us a bit more urgency. I feel getting the ball forward. He actually yeah. sat, seemed like he kind of um, was in a position further up the pitch, more as a box to box, and kind of in a two. Um, how he is sometimes with McTominay in a double pivot, and he, you know, he made the difference and got his goal. And um, it's something he's capable of. I just he doesn't get in the positions enough to show it and linking up play with you know the, the front players and um, I'm happy you know he's, he's amongst the goals and I imagine he'll I, I feel as though he is definitely a player that you know Ranjik will be looking at. Yeah, I thought he brought an energy to the team um, that no other player had brought up until that point and like you say he kind of been put in a role with instructions to kind of go box to box and kind of go wherever he needed to go to to make things happen that freed up Bruno Fernandes in some ways in those sort of closing stages as well. It felt like he was more central than he was prior to that. And then Ilanga came on as well and provided a bit more width as well. So you could see what he was trying to do with those those changes. And that, I think, for a fan is good to see because we've questioned the methods and, you know, are the players taken to what his instructions he's given to them. But when he's made a substitution and it's paid off, not just once, but twice, that's kind of vindication really for the decisions he's made. So... He must be pleased with that, surely, Ralph Ranjit, because that's uh, a great response. I think since he's been, I think since he's been manager, we've scored more goals from substitution than any other team in the league. So, I mean, it shows he's doing something right, and um, shows that his, you know, his knowledge about in-game management is, you know, very good, and we can't be questioning him on that. And you know, there's been a few players in there, for instance, obviously Jaden Sancho had probably his one of his best games in the United chair, got his first two assists for the club and got on the match. And you've got to give him a lot of credit for um, since Ranić's come in, you know, he's given him minutes and he'll start his starting games, which he wasn't under Solskjaer, which I, I, I'm sure a lot of people will be scratching their head and wondering why yeah. now you know, the performances that he's putting in, you know, he looks a lot sharp, he looks match fit, he looks quicker, uh, he's creating chances. And obviously that's what we brought him in to do. So, that's a real test, really, of, of tactical awareness for Ragnik because however he sets up the team, whichever personnel he chooses to do those jobs will say a lot about the kind of manager he is, really, because like you say, we've not seen much of him starting a game with a tactical approach that works against any of the big teams yet. We've seen him respond to matches with substitutions, and that's paid off. It seems like he analyses the game really well as he's watching it and responds to the, the action he sees unfolding before him, which is really good positive step to have but how he sets up against the Tottenham for example or against the Man City will be fascinating to see what kind of team he chooses because I know that Solskjaer was always fairly safe in those kind of situations whether Ranjik will be the same will be uh, interesting to note really.